Today we are going to work out together. <laughs> Dragon Mountain asked me how do I manage to motivate myself or keep the motivation to go work out five days a week and I think I have an interesting perspective because I'm someone who does not identify with that I'm not the sporty guy who has done it all his life and cannot say it's just part of my personality I'm someone who has built it over time so I think my answer is going to be a bit disappointing because there is a problem when you are enthusiastic and want to get started with something all you want is to have results as soon as possible immediately because what if the enthusiasm fades away right and you still haven't gotten your results well that's not how it works uh, at, or at least how it has worked for me I built this habit over years so I started a few years ago by saying, okay, I'm going to work out every day one minute. And then in a week, I'm going to add one minute to that. And then one minute and one minute more. And I did that for a few months and then I failed. And then I started again with some other approach, maybe a month later or two. Did that for a while, failed again. Did another approach, went to the gym uh, with friends that helped for a while stop doing that and so on and so forth and here I am a few years later now I'm doing an online program that helps a lot because it tells you day by day everything you have to do very motivating um, and more or less I'm managing to do that but it would have been impossible to start with this so that's the answer right um, keep trying for five years <laughs> understand that it's important for you if it if it is right like what well, that's a, another thing right connect to your why 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 should you work out right because your body is deteriorating uh, at an ever faster rate and if you don't do anything well it's you're going to produce a lot of suffering in your life so you have to pick which kind of suffering the suffering of having to go out when it's cold and run a bit or something like that or the suffering of back pains and that kind of stuff so connecting to your why helps but then again like uh, I think your biggest enemy is the desire for immediate results the desire for significant results at the beginning um, re uh, forgetting that it's about the long term right I mean it's your whole life it's something that you should do forever um, it's, no, it's not negotiable I mean I understand it in the daily life it can be hard and I'm certainly not the person who manages to do it all the time and also something that people don't know is that there is a degree of morality to this in the sense that yes uh, you can be lazy but a lot of the struggle that people have is not about laziness, it's really about the personality difference. Conscientiousness, which is the ability to force yourself to do something even if you don't feel like it, because you have a sense of duty or something, is a character trait. That, that's something that not everyone has, and for good reason, because we don't all want to be conformists, right? So, if you are not a conformist, if you don't conform either to your own dictates or to other people's dictates, well, that can be a strength. But then, obviously, with these kind of things that you just have to do, uh, you struggle. And I'm certainly one of those people. And I've always circumvented that. My whole life I've been like, for example, during my studies, when I didn't feel like studying, I didn't push myself to study. I, what I did was a trick that kind of always worked for me. So what I did was I asked myself, I started writing. Why don't I feel like writing my master thesis? I don't feel like writing my master thesis because I'm confused about that bit of the thesis. And before you know it, I was writing about the, the subject matter. And so I slipped myself into actually writing the thesis. I didn't push myself to do something I didn't feel like. I didn't force myself. That's not my strength. I was able to awaken my interest in it. 
and get motivated doing it that way. But really how you do things depends on your character. So high openness means you can get interested in things. So you should use that strength. If you're very extroverted, then try to involve people, right? If you work out with other people, that's going to be very motivating to, for you. If you're a very agreeable person, then maybe you need, really, you need a coach, uh, a fitness coach who tells you, okay, now do that and do that, right? So yeah, you have to use your character strength. Another thing is willpower. Even if we have low conscientiousness, we do have a little bit of willpower. We can force ourselves to do a little bit of something. Now the question is, how should you invest that willpower? And the answer is, you should use your willpower to build habits. Because habits don't require so much willpower. But to build habits takes time. On average they say 66 days, but don't make much of that number because the variance is pretty high, so it depends, depends on many things. But if we take that as a reference value, that means about two months. So you have about two months to build a new habit or to improve an existing one. But to do that you need to invest most of your willpower into that. Which means you have to focus on one thing at a time, which again is something that's frustrating if you have a lot of enthusiasm. <laughs> and if you're high in openness, uh, because high openness has this danger of giving you new ideas and all of them are interesting. And then you start with one and one day into the new idea you have another better idea, right? But that's a trap because that better idea will be supplanted by another better idea one day later. So if you recognize this behavior in you, then uh, you need to learn committing, right? Um, it, it's a, I think Peter Pan is a good metaphor, right? Like uh, you prefer the potential of possibility than the pain of actuality. And so possibility is always better than any actual reality, right? But that's an illusion, it's not true, right? Because part of life is actually turning something into reality. And you have to pick one thing um, and that thing is going to be imperfect. And that's going to make you suffer if you are like me. <laughs> uh, I, I struggle a lot picking a partner in my life because, um, yeah, they're never perfect. There's always someone better behind the corner. That's uh, really something I needed therapy for. But yeah, somehow I'm managing to do that. So, but say the same applied to right now my brand, you know, like radical effectiveness, rational self-help. That's the, my niche for now, right? Uh, it took me a while to kind of get fixed on one. If you go back and see my videos over this year, I've changed brand many times. Uh, and the reason is because I'm high in openness. Whenever you look at something, you immediately perceive the thing that doesn't fit. So, if I think about rational self-help, I think uh, all the ways you can use your non-rational bits to, make, to become stronger, to improve your life. So you see, uh, if people high in openness have a hard time catalyzing an identity. Because, again, we live in potential. That's what we de do, uh, high openness people. And so, it's hard for us to pick something and then stick to it. But I think it's really over age the more time passes that you realize I need to pick something. If I don't pick anything, I live my life. I don't live my life, right? Time passes and I, I just dabble in things. I start with one thing and then don't finish it. Start the next thing, don't finish it. So I guess the, this urgency of, yeah, life is finite and you will live it no matter what. You cannot wait until you have the perfect plan before you start living. Life just happens. So you might as well just pick something and do it. Back to habits. You, have, you can improve habits or change habits or introduce new habits two months at a time as a rule of thumb. While two months you have to focus on one thing and then you can move on to something different. So basically when you make a new year's resolution don't think about a list of things that you want to accomplish during the year starting all of them at the same time. No, think that when the new year starts, you have the opportunity to start or improve or remove six habits, two months at a time. And then start with one, right? You have two months for one, move to the next two months later. And while you're focused on one habit, you keep living your life, right? You don't let it go completely, but 
everything else is in maintenance mode. You can try things out, you can start your things, but no strong commitment, meaning you don't beat yourself up if it doesn't work. But the thing that you decided to focus on for these two months, that's the strong commitment. Really make it a ritual, like I did in this other video. Um, set rewards, set punishments, um, share it with people, make, uh, make the stakes high. Guys and girls, if you count my reps, the reps that I did, technically I failed today's exercise. But who cares? Okay? I think that's the point. In psychology there is a term called self-actualization. Basically means the human need to achieve their own potential. But it seems to me that only few people do that consciously. You know, really say, asking themselves, what is my potential? How could I fulfill my potential? So, if you're one of those people, join other people like you. I'm developing a community. You can join that for one dollar a month. And there you can share your commitments, your little commitments, your big commitments with us. And we are there to cheer you on. So, check it out, patreon.com slash nickredmark. Become a patron. Join the community, share your commitments, achieve your potential. See you there.